Today, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the NES and count down our top 10 favorite games. Plus, games for rich bastards and a brand new Bob and Steve. X-Play starts right now. Hello and welcome to X-Play, TV's most watched video game show. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb, and we are coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. And coming up, we get depressed and start feeling very old. Yeah. That's because the Nintendo Entertainment System turned 25. Yes, 25 years old. All this week, we'll celebrate the milestone. Today, we'll count down our top 10 NES games of all time. These are the best of the best, so don't expect Karnov to show up anytime soon. Then the X-Play crew and others share their fondest Nintendo memories. I wonder if any of them have any memories about playing organized sports. Eh, probably not. Not any good ones. And then it's a special NES edition of Games for Rich Bastards. We're going to show you some cartridges that are worth tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> But first, it's time for our retro countdown. With over 60 million systems sold, the NES was the best-selling console of its day. Everybody had one. It was so popular there were clones and bootleg games. The system wasn't successful because you could use it to watch Blu-rays or Netflix. It was a hit because the games were great. Here's our top 10. Number 10 is the sports game that started it all, Tecmo Super Bowl. Undoubtedly, the best football game on the NES, it was also the first to come with an official NFL license, and that meant goodbye fictional sports teams. Gamers now got to choose from real teams with actual NFL players. On top of that, Tecmo Super Bowl had some seriously tight gameplay. Parachuting into the number nine spot is Metal Gear. Metal Gear created the stealth genre and paved the way for so many future games. As Snake, it was your job to avoid detection as you made your way through enemy territory. It's a tough job, finding weapons of mass destruction, but a rewarding one, at least in this game. It's also worth noting that for a fun war game, it had a pretty serious anti-war message. Swinging into the number eight spot is Bionic Commando. His locomotion took some getting used to, but once you got a hang of the bionic arm, you were grappling through levels without a care in the world. In order to progress in the game, you had to find specific equipment in each stage, so if you missed anything, you might have to do a little backtracking. Just a dash of Hitler plot, an epic soundtrack, and you've got one tasty game. And we loved it, even though it made us discontent with our boring non-bionic limbs. But at least we can jump. Our number seven pick is Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. Here, our favorite vampire hunter embarked on a tour of Eastern Europe that was rife with haunted mansions and spooky villages. In a departure from the original, Simon's Quest introduced a unique non-linear exploration to the series. The addition of RPG elements was another welcome change. Throw in a few whips and you've got yourself a good time. It also scored some points for the game's ending in which there were three possible outcomes. So Nintendo was always incredibly important to me growing up. I was actually called Nintendo Boy in school as kind of a nickname because I was so into it. One of my favorite memories was the original Legend of Zelda. One day a friend of mine came to me and had the instruction booklet because he had played the game and he showed it to me and I remember reading about this mysterious world and kind of getting to learn about it and I was hooked. So I then spent the next six weeks basically scraping every single dime I could get together and so I eventually got hold of that gold cartridge in which I burnt through in about 24 hours and then proceeded to play the second quest. And that's one of my very favorite Nintendo memories. That pile of plastic instruments in your house is about to get bigger thanks to harmonics. Rock Band 3 adds keyboards and pro guitars to the mix. And unlike the insane drum kit for Rock Revolution, these peripherals are actually fun to use. Here's a preview. Rock Band fans around the world, round up your friends because Rock Band 3 is coming and it's about to make sweet sonic love to your ears once again. Adding a whole new host of features, it'll turn this fun little party maker into an actual teaching tool. So if you have aspirations to become the next legendary musician, now would be a good time to duct tape your face to the TV. If you're a rabid fan of the Rock Band series, then you've no doubt played every instrument the game has to offer. Chances are, though, you still couldn't tell the difference between a C major chord from a C minor. Well, that's about to change. 
Walkman 3 will introduce Pro Mode, which will scroll actual notes and chords down as you play. This will apply to all instruments in the Rock Band package, including the brand new keyboard. In addition to the keyboard, Mad Cats will offer the Fender Mustang controller, a guitar designed for Pro Mode, which will instruct budding guitarists with over 102 fret buttons. However, for rock banders who really want to step up their game and become real banders, Fender's upcoming six-string Squire Stratocaster could be the tool to turn a legion of mock rockers into real shredders. The improvements don't stop there. Rock Band 3 will also include three-part harmonies, so three of your best vocalists can belt out their best rendition of Bohemian Rhapsody. Furthermore, the game will allow players to drop in or drop out of a song at any time, which is a first for a Rock Band game. By the time the game releases, Rock Band 3 will have an enormous amount of content to draw from. Existing game content and DLC from the Rock Band network will carry over to the new game. Moreover, with 2,000 songs in the Rock Band library, players will have plenty of music to jam with. 83 of those songs will make full use of the keyboard. With such a tremendous library to sort through, Rock Band 3 will also include new tools, such as user-created set lists, to make searching easier. Harmonix clearly has its sights on turning Rock Band into more than just a game. If it turns any gamers into Grammy award-winning musicians, they consider me sold. Rock Band 3 releases this October 26th. I'm sure many of you have a Super Mario Duck Hunt cartridge lying around, or maybe The Legend of Zelda, but do you have a copy of Bubble Bobble Part 2? There were 798 NES games released, and some of them are extremely rare. Like, you could sell it and buy a new car rare. These are games for rich bastards. In 1990, the Nintendo World Championships roamed North America to find the best gamer in the land. Each wannabe wizard had 6 minutes and 21 seconds to score as many points as possible in three games. Super Mario Brothers, Rad Racer, and Tetris. All three games were compiled on special cartridges that were given to the 90 North American champions. If you want to acquire one of those 90 gray cartridges, it's going to cost you anywhere from five to $10,000. Even rarer are the Zelda-plated versions of the cartridges that were awarded to the 26 winners of a Nintendo Power Magazine contest. Last year, one of those sold for $18,000. The rarest game in the NES triumvirate is the Nintendo Campus Challenge 1991. It was similar to Nintendo's World Championships a year before, only the games were Super Mario 3, Pinbot, and Dr. Mario. There were a lot more keg stands involved, and there is only one of these fugly cartridges known to exist. It was sold for over $20,000 last year. I know 20 Gs sounds like a lot of money, but the most bastardly expensive game for the NES is the NTSC version of Stadium Events from Bandai. An unopened copy of this game was sold for over $41,000 in February. Seriously, that's enough money to get Sessler to strip naked and play Kingdom Hearts with you, and you decided to buy stadium events. You rich, dumb, lucky bastard. Let's talk about the X-Play staff. Kind of socially awkward, scared of sunlight, and terrible at any kind of physical activity. But they did play a lot of original NES games over the years, and I'm sure those things are not related in any way. Here's some of our personal favorites. It seems like everyone we asked had fond memories of growing up with the original NES system. And by fond, we mean traumatizing. I think it was like 1987. I finally was gonna be allowed to get a new game. And it's with my younger brother. And so we went out, we got this game called Ice Climber. Uh, let me just put it this way, you kind of go to the schoolyard and everyone else is talking about Castlevania, like I'm playing Ice Climber, where you climb up the ice. Um, it doesn't give you cred. Ah, uh, leave it to Adam to somehow equate gaming with insecurity issues. But he wasn't the only one with a story to tell. Never being able to land in Top Gun. Why the hell is it so hard to land in Top Gun? I know I'm, I'm 10 years old. I'm not a pilot. I shouldn't have to, you know, actually land the plane. It's probably, actually, probably easier to land a real plane than to land a plane in Top Gun. So Nintendo, what the hell? I beat Battletoads. <laughs> what? Did you beat Battletoads? My favorite NES memory is the shark from California Games. You know, he was the one who would come out of the water and coldly judge you every time you would fail miserably. 
I still see that shark every time I make a mistake. Leave me alone, shark. It's been like 20 years. Go away. I can't stand it. Okay, well, so far it sounds like the cast and crew here at G4 have downer memories of what should be happy, carefree childhoods. My favorite NES memory um, is, uh, I don't know if you remember back in the day, there were a ton of knockoff NES games um, and like just shovelware. And my grandmother, God love her, got me the Bible Adventures NES game. You could play as Noah and you'd carry around like little berries and fruits and bales of hay and just feed the animals. Or uh, David and, and you try to keep the baby Moses from getting thrown in the river. And uh, that was great, although I never, uh, I never beat Goliath. I won regret. Sounds like a party, Mike. We'll have more classic NES memories for you later this week. Coming up on X-Play, get ready to feel nostalgic for Power Gloves and Rob the Robot. It's bad! We'll continue our countdown of the top 10 NES games of all time. Will Bible Adventures make the cut? No, it will not. Plus, see American Incompetence at its finest in a brand new episode of Bob and Steve. All that and more right after this. <laughs> yes! X-Play is coming to the tailgate tour at a city near you. Check g4tv.com slash x-play tour for even more tour dates. Hey, I'm Dude Manrod, and I once crapped a cactus on a bed. That's tough! You know what else is tough? G4's new show, That's Tough! You're gonna see the toughest fighters, and the toughest soldiers, the toughest gangs, and the toughest prisons. That's tough! All new Wednesday at 8.30, only on G4. Everyone knows that Craigslist is only good for one thing, soliciting sex. But now that the adult services section is gone, desperate, horny people are wandering the streets, distraught and completely lost, especially those poor souls who work for our own government. When America needs a hero, when freedom stands alone, America's top agents will defend our liberty from those who wish us harm. Let us join Special Agent Bob and Secret Agent Steve, two of the finest official unofficial splinter cells. Steve! Steve, get in here! What? What is it? There's something wrong with the internet. I can't find the adult services on Craigslist. Uh, that's because they took them down. F***ing terrorists. Call Stacy so I can volunteer for the Counter-Strike team. Bob, the terrorists didn't take them down. Craigslist took them down. Craig is a terrorist? What? No, they took them down voluntarily. Why would they do that? Because it was basically a forum for prostitution? Yes. And? Okay, well, also there was that guy who killed the woman in Boston, the Craigslist killer. But he killed himself, too. It all evens out. What the hell are you even talking about? So you're telling me they shut it down because of a few hookers and a psycho? I should have guessed that's how you were hooking up. Hey, get down here with the rest of us, your holiness. You've used the internet the same way. That was an internet dating site. There's a difference. And the difference is that it sucks. It takes time to find someone I'm compatible with. That's because you're all hung up on Stacy. I, I think hung up is, is a strong word. It's two words. You know, you'd be better off going to adult services and just paying someone to act like her for the night. They do that? Sure. It's called the secretary fantasy. Uh, how far do they go with that? You can tell her what to wear, what to say. You could have her take dictation, if you know what I mean. Nah, 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 that's terrible. Well, it doesn't matter anymore because the terrorists got Craig and we can't have the secretary fantasy anyway. This is awful news. I have very specific needs. And I can't get that on Match.com. I'm not going to ask. I want you to respect that by not telling me. It's not what you think. I just, I just like to be held. Really? I like to be held by the Join us next week as Steve and Bob disarm more terrorists with their amazing cunning and stealth. While being beat with a corkscrew and choked with a belt. Steve, Steve, come back. I didn't even get to the weird sex stuff. Our list of the top
Top 10 NES games isn't filled with odd sentimental favorites or obscure titles you've never heard of. They are bona fide classics, and in the case of our next group of games, they are solid franchises that are still thriving today. Number 6 on our list is Mega Man 2. Released shortly after the first Mega Man, this was not some shoddy, hastily made sequel. That's probably why, out of all the Mega Man games, it remains the best-selling title in the series. It's hands down the best group of bosses in any Mega Man game. It also paved the way for future Mega Mans, or Mega Men. It was the first time when we saw the energy tank or the teleporter room, and it was also the beginning of the password system. Mega Man 2 was an amazing action platformer with some awesome enemies, but it also had a lot going for it visually with its bright colors and cartoonish style. And we're still hoping that the 21st century turns out to be half as fun as it is in this game. And in the number 5 spot is Mike Tyson's Punch Out. If you've never played it, you might think that including not just one, but two exclamation points in the title is overdoing it a little, but all that enthusiasm is well deserved. There's a lot to be excited about when you play as the undersized rookie Little Mac. And while it is a boxing game, it's also a game about catching patterns, and a highly addictive one at that. Of course, much of its charm comes from an amazing cast of quirky characters. You get to face off against a strange assortment of flamboyant boxers, including the likes of Von Kaiser, Glass Joe, and King Hippo. Coming in at number four on our list is the revolutionary action-adventure game, Metroid. This game was huge. You could go left, you could go right, and you could backtrack. I have to believe that playing Metroid is far better than actual space exploration. And in a game as deep as this, those save codes came in handy. They also taught us a little something about the importance of writing very legibly. And the already stellar Metroid experience was made even better thanks to the killer soundtrack. And talk about surprise endings. Samus was dead the whole time. No, no, not dead. Samus was a lady the whole time. But enough about girl power, Metroid is a game that changed our lives for the better. When Next Play returns, we'll have the shocking, dramatic conclusion to our countdown of the top 10 NES games of all time. Will we play it safe or go off the deep end and pick Balloon Fight? I'm gonna pick that. Find out what's number one right after this. Cancel those boring study groups because X-Play is coming to a college near you. The X-Play Tour Challenge is tailgating NCAA football games, and we're bringing some Xbox 360s and multiplayer mayhem. This weekend, we're going to be there when Georgia Bulldogs take on Auburn. Go to G4TV.com slash X-Play Tour for our full tour dates. Show, we've been counting down our top 10 NES games. We've seen Solid Snake, a Felon, a Belmont, and a Bounty Hunter. But now it's time for the cream of the crop, the last three games, and it all leads to number one. In the number three slot is Contra. This game delivered the arcade action straight to your living room, or maybe your rec room. But Contra was not child's play. I mean, sure, technically children did play it, but it was tough as nail. Fortunately, the Konami code offered a big helping hand in the way of 30 extra lives. And odds are, you seriously needed them. But Contra had it all. Whizzing bullets, evil aliens, and of course, two-player co-op. Bill and Lance are true pioneers in the world of multiplayer, and for that we thank them. And not only is it one of the best NES games, but it's also one of the manliest. It might be a shooter, but your real weapon was testosterone. And the runner-up coming in at number two is Super Mario Bros. 3. The biggest video game to date, it had to live up to a lot of hype. A whole lot of hype. 
We saw it in that awful Fred Savage movie before we even had the chance to play it. Fortunately, it did not disappoint. The game, that is. The movie was so much more than disappointing. This is the game that took the Mario franchise to new heights, literally. With the help of that awesome raccoon suit, Mario had the ability to soar over this glorious new world. It was everything fans loved about Super Mario Brothers and more. Old friends and new enemies, beautifully crafted levels, brilliant new landscapes. There's just about nowhere that Mario couldn't go. Arguably the pinnacle of Mario game design, we can't even hold its role in the wizard against it. And as you may have already guessed, our number one NES game is none other than The Legend of Zelda. It basically created the adventure genre. And what an adventure it was. Miyamoto designed the vast universe of Hyrule and left it up to you to figure things out. The result was a real community effort. You pretty much had to talk to your friends and pool your resources if you had any hopes of saving that princess. It was also a game with style. Even the cartridge was bling. But we don't judge a game by its cartridge and The Legend of Zelda sent us on the greatest princess saving mission of all time. It was truly an epic masterpiece that still stands up today. And speaking of epic, who could forget that soundtrack? Timeless music for a timeless game. I'd be tempted to go play it right now if I could only remember where anything was. Coming up on X-Play, we've got a whole half hour devoted to one of the year's most anticipated titles and the follow-up to our 2008 Game of the Year, Fable 3. We'll head to England for an in-depth look at this role-playing epic and get all the latest info straight from Peter Molyneux and the team at Lionhead Studios. Learn everything you need to know about the combat, the story, Albion's new look, and what awaits players in the sanctuary. Find out if you have what it takes to overthrow a king, and what trouble waits if you succeed. All that and more, don't miss it. Plus, our take on the new Left 4 Dead 2 DLC. Now, we are obviously both very excited about the Fable special. Yes. The game we're both excited about. The kind of endless phone calls to Microsoft going, I want my copy of the game right I now. I want it now. I want, I want it, now. it now. I want it now. Can I have it now? Fun. You just get lost in it. Thanks for watching X-Play.